Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to share with you how I chose the specific track I studied within electrical engineering. Electrical engineering has so many subfields and I'm sure that the choice that you have depends a lot on what school you go to. I'm sure the division of tracks is more granular at some schools and broader at others, but I hope that me sharing my thought process on how I made my decision can help you if you are in a position to make a choice for yourself. When I was an undergrad, I chose to focus on signal processing. And I mean, that itself is extremely broad. If you don't know all that signal processing encompasses, just think of all of the things in this world that we could possibly classify as signals. I mean, any form of information, pretty much. Audio, images, video, they're all signals. Radio waves, those EKG monitor things. Any trends or metric you could possibly measure over time or space, like COVID cases or plane ticket prices, these can all be represented as signals and they're all things that we might be interested in modeling or analyzing. So if you think of all of the things that could possibly be represented as signals, I mean, this area covers so much. Wireless communications, medical imaging, video streaming, audio processing, the list could just go on and on. So I picked signal processing when I was an undergrad and I was more interested in the image and video processing side of that, but I took one image and video processing course when I was an undergrad. And I mean, I did do my senior design project related to that field, but I would hardly say that I specialized in image processing. I think it's more accurate to keep it general and just say that my track was signal processing. So how did I pick that? When I was in college, I actually thought most of the classes I took were quite interesting. And that doesn't mean I enjoyed all of it or that I was good at everything, but I did just find the general process of learning new concepts and connecting the dots on how things worked to be quite fascinating. I think the main reasons that I picked signal processing were one, that I was good at it, or I did well enough in the classes to make me think that I was good at it. And two, I enjoyed the classes and the material. So, I mean, this is really specific, but I liked the math behind signal processing. I remember the first class I took where I started thinking of signals in the frequency domain. And I thought it was really cool that you could transform a signal into a different domain and it could just tell you so much more information. And then I learned how it could be applied to images, like thinking of an image, which is just a two-dimensional signal in the frequency domain, and if you process an image in a different domain, how it could have an effect on how the image looks in the more conventional spatial domain, it was just so cool to me. Not only did it make sense, but it was just really fascinating. And on top of that, I think I had some really great professors for the classes that I took in this area who were really encouraging and undoubtedly had an impact on how much I enjoyed learning about this material. I'm also a very visual learner, and I think being able to use a scripting language like MATLAB to read in an image and apply filters and to visually see the application of these mathematical concepts, I think helped a lot and just reinforced my interest in this area. I do remember the stuff that I didn't quite like in electrical engineering, and that was the super low level stuff like designing and building circuits. So I did think a lot about what I actually enjoyed learning about and doing. And now that I think about it, I didn't actually think a lot about what I could potentially do with a focus in signal processing in the future. Like I didn't think about what I would do post-college with a focus in signal processing. And I probably should have thought more about it. I think it's helpful for anyone to motivate whatever it is that you're learning. I do feel like I got lucky to have landed in the space that I'm in now, just because I hadn't thought a lot about it when I was in college. Okay, so now on to the list of courses that I feel like were most useful to me in college. I think this list is pretty good if you're interested in image or video processing, data science, or machine learning. I'll also try to put the course names and a description or something somewhere on the screen because I'm sure that the exact course names are different at different universities. Number one is algorithms. I actually took this class as a graduate student because it was so important and I had not taken it when I was an undergrad. This class is really important if you wanna do anything with writing code. And if you're gonna interview for any software related roles, 
I mean, this class alone could probably prepare you pretty well for some of those screening or coding interviews. The second class that I have on this list is Linear Systems and Signals. This is the course where I first started thinking about signals in transformed spaces. The third class I have on this list is Data Science Principles or an Intro to Machine Learning course. I TA'd for this class when I was in graduate school and I didn't actually take it as an undergrad. I took a version of it when I was in graduate school, but this is where you'll learn all about data processing, fundamentals of building predictive models, really important if you want to do anything related to machine learning or data science. And with so much of this industry thinking about doing things in more data-driven ways, I feel like a course like this could help anyone just understand and keep up with where the tech industry is heading. The fourth course is one that I cannot leave off this list, and that is image and video processing. I mean, this course taught me the fundamentals of image processing and was extremely helpful in setting me up to work in the computer vision space. And now I have a couple math courses that I think taught some really fundamental concepts. The fifth course I have on this list is calculus. At my school, it was broken up into, I think, three or four different levels. I don't know how it's broken up at other universities, but who knew we would need to know derivatives and integrals for anything outside of school? Turns out calculus teaches you a lot of important fundamental concepts. Next on my list is matrices or some sort of linear systems course. I took two, one called matrices and matrix calculations and another called applied linear algebra. These types of math classes teach you about vectors and matrices and linear and nonlinear systems and orthogonality in data. These are really important concepts to know if you want to do anything in data processing or any type of statistical analysis or data science. The last class I have on this list is less technical, but I think it's a little bit more important than a lot of people realize when they're taking it. And that is engineering communications. This course teaches you about technical writing and how to give presentations and how to communicate your technical work effectively. I have reviewed a lot of papers that are just so poorly written. And I think being able to write well technically is actually kind of a rare skill. I'm sure at a lot of schools, this is probably considered an easy engineering requirement to fulfill, but I think it's a really important course to include in any engineering curriculum. I also have some honorary mentions for courses that I'll put up on the screen if you're interested in signal processing, image or video processing, machine learning, data science, or computer vision. If you have any questions about these courses or any of the other courses that I mentioned in this video, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below. I hope the information that I shared in this video was helpful to you in some way. If it was, or if you just found the video interesting, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh boy.